and now I'm really conscious of it. I always feel kind of inadequate compared to others and I think that I've gone as far as I can with my career modelling. I got into modelling when a local fashion boutique were looking for someone and my mother said I would do it. I was mortified at the start, but it was actually the best thing that happened to me. Uh, the highlight being so far that I've appeared on live national television for RT. I love it and I would never take it back now, even though the first day I was dreading going in. I was on the Today Show, which is shot in Cork with Maura Duran and Dahi O'Shea. Dahi O'Shea was a complete blackguard pulling faces behind the camera when we were meant to be doing our walk. So it was hilarious thinking that he was there pulling faces when no one could see it. It was brilliant. I loved every minute of it. And when I got home, I watched it with my parents on Sky Plus. I got into modelling by updating my acting CV. So the photographer who took my headshot said that, um, he, I don't know, he saw potential in me. He said I had striking features. So I laughed up at him at the time and Kiss Magazine then wrote to me saying that could they use me to be their model for the magazine. So I went along, I went up to Dublin and from there then the ball started rolling. I think the average person thinks that models are tall, really skinny, have eating disorders, um, that they are big drama queens and they always kind of get the way that they want and they don't work hard enough. The reality for the average model is that they're normal human beings. Most models I know are students and they have to look after themselves and make sure that they deliver on every shoot so they can't be out the night before until 4 a.m. doing drugs or drinking. They have to show up fresh, ready to whatever the photographer or stylist needs or wants from them. They work really, really hard. You know, there's, they have to get up early in the mornings. They have long days of shoots. There's a lot of waiting around as well. Um, it's a proper job and people need to consider that as well, that it could be anyone, like a the girl or boy next door, it, they don't have to be famous. I mean, I so far I haven't met any model who's able to do it just full time. Mm. They always have to have something else yeah. going as well. Yeah. So. But there probably wouldn't even be that much opportunity for them here. No. Well, maybe there might be, but not as much as like Dublin, let's say, or. Yeah. But even the, even in Dublin, I just think in Ireland in general, you'd have to have a backup. Yeah, definitely. So <laughs> it's amazing then because everyone just assumes they're this stuck up. Yeah. <laughs> the most uncomfortable situation for me was probably when I was in town with um, a bikini and a big huge headpiece on my head. And I had to like walk around, like the photographer just wanted like, I don't know, kind of shoots around town. And um, I had to wear, it was kind of like a bikini, but like a shawl thing over it. And I had to wear this like big massive headpiece that like really hurt like my head along here. At the start it was fine, but after a while, you know, the long waiting and stuff, it started kind of hurting. But. Uh, I love... Especially in public. Yeah. <laughs> like, you only want to kind of like the background scene and stuff, like people walking past, kind of like natural kind of things, and like have this like crazy girl with this headpiece on her head in the <laughs> middle of it. Um, and it's pretty cold as well, actually, but... The photos kind of turned out cool, I suppose, but... It was actually, there. that's true. Mine were really cool in the end. Yeah. It was a really sharp... My makeup to do with... It was kind of a dystopian look. Yeah, cool. So. See, I knew the photographer as well beforehand, but you didn't. No. <laughs> I think that's always the worst as well. You're kind of like, I don't know who this person is. He's taking my photos. Yeah. But I think the best though is when the stylist is really creative. Yeah. Um, and they work with your body. Yeah. My f I love when I get to wear nice fitted dresses. Yeah, definitely. I'm like, yay. <laughs> um, I think vintage. I think that's always my favorite yeah, vintage, one. Vintage, that's it. Because they always have the lovely tiny waist yeah. and like big <laughs> skirt. Yeah. The little flick as well, yeah, the red lips. Yeah, red lips. <laughs> They're good. Yeah. Height is very important in modelling. My friend who got through to the semi-final auditions for Britain's Next Top Model said that the cut-off height was 5 foot 8. Anyone else under that was just turned away. Well, height is a big issue. They always want tall models, um, simply because clothes hang like much better on them, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> but... Um, it's getting there though, you know, they do kind of look for models of all ranges at the moment. 
as um, I mentioned earlier on in Moscow, they did a um, fashion show um, and they actually had models with disabilities that took over the catwalk. So that was all over the newspaper and stuff. So that was big. Um, yeah, um, when you're at fashion shows though, it is kind of daunting. You have like these tall models there and I'm only like five, four or something. So they're just kind of looking down, you know, and it's kind of like, oh God, but yeah. It really gets me down because I'm only five foot six. Height was never an issue with me until I started modeling. And now I'm really conscious of it. I always feel kind of inadequate compared to others. And I think that I've gone as far as I can with my career modeling because of my height. So it's a bit of a bummer. And it is a dream. So for anybody to do it is, is an honor. <laughs>